to refresh, but I am, so whatever. Okay, so... <clears throat> Sup mates and welcome to Alex Tries to Game Live. Today we are playing Mount and Blade Warband. We are currently playing uh, with a mod installed. The way Mountain Blade works, uh, you sort of when you download mods, uh, they sort of download as modules. So for most mods, they are sort of total conversion mods and you um, can only actually have one running at a time. That said, I have what is called the Diplomacy mod running, which just gives you more options when talking to people, which is great. Uh, so we're going to be starting a new game. I don't actually know how... I forget most of how the Diplomacy mod works. So, we are... Uh, so the way Mountain Blade works, imagine sort of a setting like... It's a very Game of Thronesy kind of setting. Think that kind of theme, just without the magic. Um, and it's basically, you've got your, your many kingdoms, and everybody's fighting to become the emperor of all of the main continent, which is called Caladria. Or, not continent, but like nation, whatever. Welcome, adventurer, to Diplomacy for Mountain Blade Warband. Before beginning the game, you must create your character. Remember that in traditional medieval society depicted in the game, war and politics are usually dominated by male members of the nobility. That does not, however, mean that you should not pl choose to play a female character or one who is not of noble birth. Male nobles may have a somewhat easier start, but women and commoners can attain all the same goals. And, in fact, have a much more interesting, if more challenging, early game. Uh, yeah, I've played a woman before and it was interesting. It, it, really, not a whole lot changes except that, except for your interactions with uh, male nobles. Uh, like, one, like, sometimes they'll, I don't know, offer, like, a random smarmy quirk, or, um, they'll, uh, or, or they'll, like, offer themselves up for marriage or whatever, and you can just insult them, and that's it. So, it's, it's not great. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not saying it's not great to play one, but it's not, like, as huge a deal as they make it out to be. So, uh, I mean, I, I've kind of got a character in mind, and he just happens to be male, so let's make a dude. Uh, so... You were born years ago in a land far away. Your father. Now, my father. Uh, see, I come from a um, a noble house, a once noble house, sort of. Uh, they they used to be like a big deal name, but lately they've been kind of declining in um, in in popularity, in wealth, in basically influence, in nobility. Uh, so, my father is actually an impoverished noble. Uh, you came into the world the son of a declining nobility, own owning only the house in which they lived. Now, I was taught kind of like the basics of nobility, like how it works, how I'm supposed to act, behave, and all that. It wasn't for me. Who wants to go sitting around, fake smiling at a bunch of people you hate, doing nothing productive? Like, that's not me. So... Basically, as a young child, uh, I actually ran away from home um, and uh, ended up in Caladria, in which I took to the steppes. Uh, the steppes being the uh, base of many mountains, the uh, sort of mountainy area. Uh, and and I, I sort of just wandered, I, I rode the great steppes on a horse of my own, learning the ways of gr the grass and the desert. Although you sometimes went hungry, you became a skillful hunter and pathfinder in this trackless country. You, your body too started to harden with muscle as you grew into the life of a nomad man. Um, so after that, um, I mean, continuing the, the theme of having absolutely no regard for my noble name, uh, I don't friggin' care that I'm a noble, I'm a friggin' uh, at heart, I'm a step man, I'm a nomad man. Um, can't keep me, uh... I only have two viewers, and those two viewers are me. Did everybody bail? What happened? And yet, Matt and Sierra is still in. Okay, my view count is just borked. That's fine. That's fine. Um... Back on topic. Just thought it was odd. Um, yeah, so you can't keep me, uh, tied down. So I started, um, you know, as many people do in the lawless steps, I, I started turning to more illicit activities because screw that system. Um, I take what I want, uh, or I take what I need, and nobody can stop me. 
I'm not used to playing bad or lawless characters, uh, so this is a bit of a new outside of my comfort zone. Uh, though the distinction felt sudden to you, somewhere along the way you had become a man, and the whole world seemed to change around you. Dissatisfied with the common men's desperate scrabble for coin, you took to your own local lord's forests and decided to help yourself to its bounty. Laws be darned! You hunted stags, boars, and geese, and sold the precious meat under the table. You cut down trees right under the Washington's roses, and turned them into firewood that warmed many freezing homes during the winter. All for a few silvers, of course. Um, I decided to strike out on my own, because you know what? I wasn't really satisfied with just getting by on a couple of silvers for, like, a stag or whatever. I wanted wealth. I wanted money. I wanted to build an army, sort of. I wanted to become the leader, because I kind of had like a little ragtag group that I would ride with, but I kind of dreamed of more, you know? I was a bit of a Disney princess that way. I wanted to build together a powerful group of, um, uh, of, of pirates, <laughs> like land pirates, brigands, um, that, that would, whose name would strike fear into the hearts of noble lords and kings. So it was the lust for money and power. Only you know exactly what caused you to give up your old life and become an adventurer. God dang, I'm sorry, uh, pizza. Uh, to everyone else, it's clear that you're now motivated solely by personal gain. You want to be rich, powerful, respected, and feared. Uh, you want to be the one whom others hurry to obey. You want people to know your name and tremble whenever it is spoken. You want everything, and you won't let anyone stop you from having it. Let's begin. So, I begin. Uh, because my father was an impoverished noble, I am technically nobility, so I technically carry a banner. So, in choosing a banner, I have to select uh, the banner that I believe represents me and my people. I need to pick something that strikes fear into the hearts of my enemies. Something that is easily recognizable and represents me and my group. And I think that nothing really represents that better than the picture of me uh, in silhouette form, riding my horse and firing my bow and being just generally awesome. Uh, what will this game's saving policy be? Uh, I do not wish to... I'm gonna stick with all my choices. Uh, it's gonna be very hard for me, cause I, yeah, it's gonna be very hard for me, but I think I can do it. Um, no quitting without saving. Bam. You can now enter your name, distribute your attributes. Okay, so my name is actually... My name is Baxter Nottingham, son of Zachary, if you want to get fancy, but I, I never, I never get fancy. In fact, I kind of avoid t telling people my, uh my family name, just because I don't really want to be associated with um, that name. Now, we want really good power draw, which makes me good at archery, uh, and really good riding and horse archery, because that makes me good at horse archery. Um, now, we want to be able to, uh, we want to be able to loot pretty well, so, because this is going to be our entire source of income, is going to be, like, robbing the dead. Um, and finally, I think, uh, uh, prisoner management? Uh, we could do because that is a pretty good early game source of income, or a pretty good source of income, I should say. Um, I could take inventory management so I can actually hold my loot, but I, I think I can deal with that. Like, that won't be become a problem until later levels. So, for now, prisoner management, so I can start taking prisoners. Um, many people run into battle yelling, take no prisoners, but they don't understand that prisoners are where the money is. Uh, archery is kind of my jam. Uh, there is also pole arms, which I probably ought to do. Maybe I'll have like a spear and shield or something like that. But mainly, I want to cap out archery as much as I can. 93 points in archery, 15 points in crossbows, because crossbows are for people who don't know how to fire bows and stuff. Uh, now I get to bake my dude. Uh, the beard is very important. Uh, I'm gonna go with... Uh, I don't want a mustache. I want a beard. And I kind of like the default hairdo. Um, 
Uh, what looks... What looks, like, kind of bandity scary? Actually, you know what? What if I change up the hair? Oh, uh, that looks actually pretty good. Looks kind of, like, dashing, yet totally could take your head off from 50 meters away. Cool. Uh, okay, so the place that I begin at, uh, there are many different kingdoms in Caladria. Uh, it uh, does a very good job explaining what they are. Basically, Praven. Now I'm going to continue with the theme of the um, of the uh, Game of Thrones because that really is what they seem to have based a lot of their uh, setting on. Um, so you've got the Kingdom of Swadio, which are culture-wise kind of like the the Lannisters. Uh, the Vagirs are sort of like the Starks, they're the Northerners. Uh, the Karagate Khanate are sort of like the Dothraki, they're the Steppes, the uh, Horse Archers, that kind of thing. Uh, the Nords are uh, like Vikingy. Who were they like again? The Greyjoys. No, the Ironborn. Greyjoys, Ironborn, I guess it's kind of the same thing, but uh, the Ironborn from the Iron Islands. Uh, the Rodox were sort of like the Vale, uh, in that they're kind of like. They, they live in the mountain. Uh, sorry. They're like the Tyrells. Uh, I think they're from the Vale. I, I'm, I always... That... The Vale, the Eerie... I, I always get that kind of area mixed up. Um, but yeah, the Rodox are very much like the Tyrells. They're very... Uh, I, I'm not going to say they're all like weak and pretty culture, but uh, they're definitely a lot more... Hmm. I guess Tyrell example, the more I think about it, the more it breaks apart. But they're kind of like mountainy people who live a little bit smaller deal than uh, the Swadians. Uh, but they live very close to the Swadians and they're very similar to the Swadians. Just different. They're also very mercantile, but everybody kind of is. Uh, and then there's the Sal Serenid Sultanate, which is sort of like Dorne. Okay, uh, me, I am obviously... Uh, of the Kyrgyz Khanate. Uh, not that I was born there, but that's definitely where I currently live. Um, you came with the caravan, crossing the... Ma okay, this is kind of uh, not actually how it happened. Um, but, you know. Um, saw before you the Caladrian steps. On some hillsides, the thin grass of spring was already turning yellow. Uh, but the lower slopes of the mountains were still vibrant green. Herds of sheep and tawny steppe ponies drifted across them like clouds, testifying to the wealth of the Kergate Khans. From time to time, small groups of horsemen would follow your caravan and ignore the caravan part, uh, perhaps sizing up how well you could defend the wealth you carried. So it was with some relief that you saw the towers of Tulga rising up from the plains. Jesus, a freaking gas. Okay. So, um, Tool Guy is sort of like the capital of the Karagit Khanate. Uh, you'll, you'll see. Soon enough. Um, you're exhausted by the time you find an inn at Tulga and fall asleep quickly. However, you wake before dawn and are eager to explore your surroundings. You venture out onto the streets, which are still deserted. All of a sudden, you hear a sound that, that stands the hairs on the... N the hairs of your neck on end. I apologize, I can speak. The rasp of a blade sliding from its scabbard. Continue. So the game defaults to third, we're gonna get into the game now. Game defaults to third person, screw that. I'm, I'm like super hot though. Uh, no, but I, I like to play in first person mode, especially because I'm wielding a bow. Uh oh, dude's got a bow too. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sort of like hide around a corner and come at me bro. Uh oh, that didn't work. Okay, I need to use my axe, which I suck with. Okay, that hit. Ah, uh, dang it! Ow! Die! Die! Oh, wonderful! I killed him, guys! I killed him. Oh man, when I was practicing for this, I did so much better. I sort of like looked around and I was like, I saw him. Pew! Headshot. Um, but no, this time I'm talking, so of course I'm terrible. Oh, hey, another guy. Uh, Merchant of Tulga. Good thing I didn't see him a second ago, otherwise he'd have an arrow in his forehead. Are you alright? Well, I guess you're alive at any rate. I'm not sure we'll, that we can say the same about the other fellow. That's one less thief to trouble off streets at night, although heaven knows he won't be the last. Anyway, maybe you can help me with something. Let's talk more inside. Out here, we don't know who's listening. 
the merchant takes you to his house. There's not usually this much cutscene. Like, after this little bit, it sort of sets you free. Uh, once inside, he stands by the door for a while, checking the street, and then, finally convinced you have not been followed, comes near you to speak. Continue. Comes near me to speak. Apparently not. Merchant of Tuga. Now, let me explain my proposition. Proposition? What's this guy getting into here? We've always had brigands in the hills driven to banditry by war, debt, love of violence. Oh, please, don't go on. Eh, maybe a little. Um, recently, however, they've been getting bolder. Leaving their camps in the wild and venturing into town, looking for unwary prey. The watch commander tells us uh, it's because of all the fighting on the frontiers for your men to keep an eye on the streets, but I'm not sure what to make of that. Uh, it all seems to be the... It seems to me that the most logical explanation is that these bandits have an ally inside the walls who keeps them, uh, who helps them enter unnoticed and helps them identify peculiarly, particularly tempting targets. Last week you see they took my brother. I'm very sorry to hear that. Uh, I don't know what my brother was thinking, yada yada yada. Uh, my character is kind of, Baxter Nottingham is totally spaced out at this point. Uh, he has no idea what's going on. Uh, what do you say? Um, you know what? I don't think I need a tutorial, and I don't really want to enter this game fighting for fighting. Uh, now, I'm not saying I want to stick out for these bandits. There is no honor among thieves. But, I mean, doing our first mission as like an honorable justice bringing mission for a merchant? Eh, I'm not really interested. I want to strike out on my own. I want to uh, go into. Welcome to the world map, by the way. So, this is the world. Uh, you've got. Um, the steps are here. I, if you weren't quite clear on what steps were like, I hope this kind of clears it up for you. Um, it's like mountainy kind of stuff. Uh, you got the Vagars, which are the north. Uh, you've got the Nords, uh, which are not the north. It's still technically the north. Anyway, uh, you've got the, uh, Caladrians. Um, capital Praven, by the way. Uh, capital Tyr. Capital Kira. Uh, capital Tulga. Uh, you've got the Rodox, which are sort of over here. They're also mountainy, but they're not steps because they're not. Uh, capital Volusia? I think it's Volusia. Maybe it's Jokala. I'm not sure. Uh, and then it, it doesn't actually... The capitals don't really matter, to be totally honest. They're all just cities. Um, and then there is uh, the Serenid Sultanate. Uh, capital Amrhad? I want to say Amrhad, but I, I could be wrong. Again, doesn't really matter. And then, of course, there are castles littered around, small villages that you can uh, go get soldiers at. Uh, first things f and there's me, yay, uh, with my little flag. Uh, so first things first, I'm probably actually not going to want to run out on my own. Uh, the Sanjar Khan is there. Now viewing the overland map, cool, I know how this game works. Uh, so we're gonna, I mean, as any good bandit should do, first place you go is always a tavern.